Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Hoover Public Library Gallery's Artist Talk series. My name is Jennifer, and I am one of the curators of the exhibitions program at HBL. And today I am so thrilled to welcome artist, educator, and curator Christina Renfer Vogel. Um, she currently serves as Associate Professor of Painting and Drawing at the University of Tennessee in Chattanooga. Uh, she is a painter and her subject matter is most often the still life, interior spaces, and landscapes. And her work is a discussion with the history of painting. So today Christina will be discussing her, discussing and sharing her work with us. And um, again, I am so thrilled to talk to you today and see you. How are you doing? I'm hanging in there. Thank you for the introduction and the invitation to talk about my work. I'm, uh, I'm in Chattanooga right now, I'm at my house. Um, but um, yeah, I'm, do I'm doing well. I'm here with my husband and our cats and uh, I just got access to my studio a couple of weeks ago again. So I, I was working at home for some time, but now I'm, I'm able to go back to the studio, which has been really good. Well, I'm excited to uh hear you talk about your work and to share it with the visual arts community in Alabama. Um, so why don't I just hand the reins over to you and you okay. can share your screen and walk us through your website and give us a little background about your process and your work. Sounds great. Okay, I'm sharing my screen. Oh. <laughs> okay, what I want is this. Okay, here I am. Here's my website. Okay, so um, I appreciate this opportunity and also this format. I've never done a talk like through my website before. So this is also a good way for me to, to think about how to approach my work with the, the website as a kind of um, platform. And you know, an artist website is, is very important. Uh, there has been some conversation that I've heard, some chatter recently about how you don't need a website anymore. Uh, especially because social media and Instagram in particular has taken on such a role uh, for visual artists. But I find the website to still be a really important tool, um, a promotional tool, but also a way for me to kind of organize my work and think through it in bodies of work or categories to think through like how I want to present my work in this way and what work makes sense together and to think about the sequencing of one work to the next. And that's, you know, that's something that artists have to do a lot is to sort of look at the breadth of their work and make sense of it in some way, um, to categorize, even to think about sequencing is something that we do a lot when we're preparing for an exhibition, for example. Um, so I thought I would start by talking about a body of work called Encounters, um, which is, now work that I think was made over a couple of years, like 2014 and 2015. Um, and it's sort of taken on a different kind of, um, or a more expanded meaning now when we're living as we are right now, thinking about distance. Um, I was thinking about that too at the time, but very differently. The figure, while I haven't been working with the human figure, most recently has been a common thread through my work. And, and right now it's something that I've been thinking about returning to and thinking about how to do that. But with this work, I, I went away to a residency program in Vermont where I was, where I had a lot of time and space to think about work and I, I wanted to make a new body of work. And, you know, a body of work is really important because instead of, for me, because instead of just thinking about one piece on its own, you're thinking about the relationships between works and how together they can create this larger story or, you know, when you take two works and put them together, a third thing is created because you, you have the relationship between the two pieces. Uh, so I was looking through um, photographs that I had taken and a lot of them at the time were still um, analog, like, well, I was printing them out like at a drugstore, so I was still able to hold these prints in my hand. And a lot of them were taken with my phone, not taken with the intention of making paintings from them. Um, so there are all of these like casual encounters, and I found that I was being attracted to groupings and gatherings of people. 
And um, what I was most interested in in these images was the kind of um, relationships between people, uh, what I thought as like a stolen glance or a, a way that somebody was holding their body. Uh, and they're not necessarily narrative, like I don't have a story for each painting, but I was thinking about how by um, taking away a lot of information, like the specificity of the place that the figures uh, occupy, that could open things up for the viewer and it could, it could allow for multiple interpretations, which is a goal that I often have for my work. Um, and so that's what a lot of this was about. And it was for me about standing on the outside, kind of looking in. Um, I, I feel like I, I really like people. That's one of the reasons that I appreciate being an educator and I, I really value relationships and human interaction, but I also value solitude very much. And I, I recognize, especially now, how much solitude is a privilege um, and it's a choice. But also, I think, especially now, you have to think about solitude also in relationship to loneliness and how they are distinct because loneliness is, is usually not a, a, um, wanted. It's not a choice. It's not a decision. Um, and a lot of people were like reading these paintings as being about, at the time, about loneliness and they felt like they were... Um, not dark exactly, but like very tense. And I, I was definitely interested in a kind of um, tension in the work, like a quiet tension for sure. Um, but it was surprising in an exciting way to just get everyone's reaction and to get everyone's response. And um, I also had made these when I first moved to Chattanooga. So it was like in the year after I had been there. So I think that maybe was part of it, although I wasn't thinking about it as the time at the time, but thinking about how I'm positioning myself in a place and with, with new people. And a lot of the, the figures in these paintings are people that were kind of in my everyday experiences and surroundings. I think I'm almost at the end. And a lot of it too is feeling like um, not a part of things often, um, how I don't necessarily fit into all of the like social experiences that I was encountering at the time. And um, I think that's the last one. And these paintings, they range a lot in terms of scale. Some of them are quite large and some of them are smaller. And then really quickly, I'll just kind of zip through. You can always visit my website and look at larger details if you like. But then I made some um, drawings. Then these are small and with watercolor media. So they're smaller and much faster. Something that I was thinking about too is just ambiguity and allowing for some openness. Uh, and I think that's something that I also like to pursue. Like I, I appreciate something being very direct often, but at the same time that you can maybe recognize a specific person or you can recognize that there is a person, there is something about it that might make you question what's going on or make you wonder if there is something under the surface. Okay, so those are the drawings from the, that series. Let's go back up, try not to go too fast. And then I worked on those paintings for about two years and you know, I teach full time. So I, it was, making these paintings at, at in some cases like on a residency where I had a good block of time and then just also when I can carve out time throughout the week around my full-time teaching position. So two years is like for me not a lot of time to spend on a body of work but I don't that might sound like a lot of time to some people. Um, and it really reached a pretty natural conclusion um, where I felt like I was ready to move on from that. And you know, so I kind of have fallen into making landscape paintings. It's not something I ever thought that I would do. And I had the opportunity to go to a residency in Hambidge, uh, which is in northern Georgia. Some of you might be familiar with it. And it's, it's quite, um, um, it's like, it's a small program. They have maybe eight people there at a time and every resident, um, and they might be a writer or they might be a chef or they might be a scientist. 
Um, it's not only visual artists. They get their own cabin where they have the space to live and also work. And it's isolated. So there, you don't have internet connection um, also in your cabin, which was a really good experience for me to just disconnect entirely. But it's also not far from a grocery store, for example. So you're not entirely isolated, but it feels very much like you are during the day. And so after I made those figurative paintings from the Encounter series, I went to this place and was in a cabin which in June in Georgia, you know, and it was just very lush and verdant and full of life and um, birds and insects. And um, I started making these paintings of, of the landscape, but also kind of like from the perspective of someone who makes portraits, I think, because they weren't really, they were still kind of closely cropped in a lot of cases. And I'll, I'll go through, these are all mixed up. But so that's sort of what started that series. I also wanted to return to working from life. So working from direct observation rather than um, as mediated by a photograph or as looking at a photograph while I was making the paintings because the experience for me, it's not better or worse, but the experience of working from life is, has always been really exciting for me. And I, I just see a lot of visual information and it's so, um, you, you know, you're like, when you're making a landscape painting, you, you are very much um, like the sun is a factor, the kind of light, the weather, all that stuff. And that was exciting and challenging to me. And landscape is certainly not a new genre, just like portraiture is a very, has like deep historical root, roots, but it was new to me and that felt exciting. And then I had opportunities um, in 2017 and 2018 to go to Italy. Uh, I did a residency there for three weeks. And, and then I went back to the same place in Civita Castellana with, with a program called the um, Jerusalem Studio School and um, JSS in Chivita. And I went back with students and both summers for five weeks about total, I was able to make these paintings on site. And so these are a mix of paintings I made in Italy and also in Georgia. And, you know, since that time I have been making, like during this time when we've been sheltered at home. I've been um, making some paintings at home and it has been something that I've returned to, like making smaller paintings and working from either landscape or also interior spaces. And they are, um, to me, like very energetic paintings. Like sometimes they, I know a question that people often ask is how long does, how long did it take to make this work? So some of them, like this one took me maybe 30 minutes and others, I went back. I think this one was a really fast one as well, fast for me. And then others, I went back over multiple sessions and made um, the painting over a number of days. Um, a painting like this was a few hours, but all in one shot, which is uh, called Alla Prima, when you're making a painting all at once. Um, and this is really very traditional. Like these are all made with a French easel, which is like an easel that you fold up like a suitcase and then you can um, tuck it under your arm and or throw it in the back of your car or put it in a suitcase and travel with it, you know, and um, so it's a very portable way of working. That's also very historical, you know, um, the, this is not anything new, but I also think there's something uh, exciting to me about working in this way that is, that has deep historical roots. I find that to be informative and um, yeah. So it's this is sort of like an open-ended, it's not a, a body of work in the same way, but it's just something that I have been returning to over the years. And really that's, that's often what my work is like, like now that I've been working professionally um, or seriously, not necessarily professionally for 20 years now, I can look back at work that I made 20 years ago and it doesn't feel all that unrelated to the same interests I still hold dear. And I, you know, I was thinking about things like, like this is like a, a big famous mountain in Italy where I was where I was living for a time, and so I made this almost as a kind of joke, like this, not a joke, but this is like the painting you have to make when you go there to work with landscape, like knowing that there is all of this kind of baggage. But then I'm also equally interested in this like dumpy little couch that was in my apartment um, where I was staying, and I just think there's something kind of 
a little bit funny to me about like the the um like the sad little sweet couch and then the big you know uh, mountain that you're supposed to paint if you're painting landscape um and I should also say like landscape as a genre was never really um something that has grabbed me I have really kind of fallen into it and have learned to appreciate it These, these are paintings that I made it in Georgia, up in this little cabin. Okay, and back to the beginning. So, and then, you know, the, really, so being in Georgia at that time and like making those paintings, I came back to my studio and I started to bring house plants into my studio. I, I've had some in there and then I just started really filling it up. Plants have always been something that have, have like followed me in my life from living all over. And it's something that I associate also with my mother who always had a lot of plants growing up. And it's kind of the first thing that I do when I move into a new space is I put a plant in it because it just it makes it a little more comfortable for me. Um, and so I started making these paintings, which are essentially like portraits in a way that's like, especially these early ones, like a single plant. Um, in some cases they have uh, like a pattern background like this one. And I was thinking about being in nature and the kind of abstraction that's offered by nature, the repetition and the shapes and, you know, these are all formal visual um, characteristics. I'm really attracted to visual complexity also. So it's like something that I find to be really exciting, uh, an exciting problem to solve through painting. Like how do I take all of this information and distill it down into something that's more simple? So thinking about, you know, you can talk about abstraction in different ways. You can talk about abstraction as being um, a simple, like a verb, like simplifying something. You can abstract something, or you can think about abstraction as being um, non-objective, as not relating to anything, any particular thing visually in the work. Um, and they, they're not all full and full of patterns. Some of them are also very simple. Um, but also they kind of speak to me speaks to how much I am like a very traditional studio painter in the sense that I like to be by myself and go into a space and just work and kind of have a controlled environment um, where I can control the light and I can control the temperature and I can control the situation. And so that's also why I think working in the landscapes where you, in the landscape where you can't control any of those things is an exciting problem for me. Um, and so these paintings are all like plants that are just kind of around in the space where I'm working. And so there are areas, you know, that are, that are more complex. And I was thinking about, and they are of um, actual fabric. So like I, I would have a piece of fabric pinned up in this case behind this plant. So it's something that I'm setting up um, like a still life and, or like a portrait and, and painting from direct observation. But I'm taking a lot of liberties too. And so I might use the color to some extent that's from the pattern that I'm observing, but I'm also um, simplifying and um, I'm not interested in, a, in painting representationally to the point where I'm trying to make it look like an exact copy. Like I want there to be um, areas that are, that are painterly, that are showcasing gesture. Oh, that's the painting that's right behind me right now, actually. Um, that are a little loose and maybe more open or that just show that it's, it's physical paint. I'm not interested in fooling anyone into thinking that it's the real thing. Um, and I, I was also just thinking about, like I think all throughout my work, just even as a student, I've always been interested in the formality of portraiture and I, I, I can't tell you why. It's, it's like not a cool thing to care about, but I think there's something about um, something that's staged that feels kind of theatrical. Um, so I'm thinking about how can something be a little bit staged or theatrical, but at the same time, very simple and ordinary. Um, and I'll just show you. And then like going from that, this is work that I've been making most recently. Um, and 
you know, it felt, it felt like a natural extension from the paintings of plants where I'm now painting flowers. And it seems like painting the flowers is almost a bridge between the landscape paintings and the plants. Like it, it feels all very connected, um, which is why I'm also thinking about rethinking like how I'm, how I should be organizing my website and do I need to take some work out and should I collect some categories and, um, so that's something that's been on my mind. So this is helpful as an exercise to continue to think through it. Um, but you know, the flowers are going to fade and they're going to die and they're cut flowers. And in some cases these are, um, oh, and then plants still, um, but like more. And I'm thinking about like, how can I make something like this was, this was a painting that I made really over two years. And I, I didn't, I didn't work on it every day for two years, but I worked on it for a while and then I set it to the side for a, a long time. And then I, I got kind of nervous about getting back into it because I liked where it was. And, and in that time, you know, the, the, the plants grew and they, they changed a lot. And so in some cases, like the painting changed with it and in some cases with the plants and in some cases they didn't. And so it becomes a kind of fiction where times is sort of collapsed and, and the painting continues to evolve in some places and in other places it's static. And then I like that about it as well. Um, and then it, like I'm thinking about patterns still and um, painting actual physical flowers and then painting patterns of flowers and I'm thinking about how I'm flattening and abstracting within the paintings too. So thinking about how, how can, I don't think I said this, originally I was thinking about introducing patterns as a way to like almost extend from the plant into the background space. So I, I liked those moments where there was kind of a visual echo or um, there, like the plant in some cases like starts to entangle with the, um, the stripey background. And I find that really exciting and challenging to figure out how to do that like in the painting. Um, and then again, in others, it's just the, just the thing, just the plant, just the flowers. Um, some of these painting, like some of the, the flowers are from, I have a good friend who gives me flowers a lot from her garden. Um, some of them are, are like composed bouquets that I, I've been given or have purchased. So it's really a, um, a combination of things. And similarly, the fabric itself, some of them has a, has, have a lot of meaning to me and they are particular um, patterns or garments for a particular reason and others aren't but it's like an exciting start for me for a painting and I'm also thinking about like how flowers have associations and connotations so like they are I think overtly beautiful and beauty has often been um, not as um, respected I think just in terms of um, art in general or something to be it was it was the thing you know for a long time and then it was something to be avoided especially when I was in school as a student that was something to be really suspicious of I think uh, so I'm interested in that and so like interested in kind of embracing that um, and feeling like also how flowers can be are often associated with femininity and can be um, a kind of symbol of woman and thinking about what that means. And I think beauty can be disarming as well. And so it's a way of like sneaking in these other ideas maybe that I have about um, thinking about um, the relationships in my life. And I was thinking a lot also about performed femininity and how um, I and other women are um, perceived or expected to behave. Here is, here is my nod to um, like historical painting, like thinking about Dutch still life painting um, in this example. Um, being, I think there's something, again, kind of funny about being really uh, direct about that, like that I'm thinking about having a studio reference in the mix along with um, um, things that I've, I've composed myself. So it's this really like, it's like a stew of all sorts of things that I'm thinking about um, and I'm still thinking about. This is like the, the most, um, I don't know what the right word is, um, indulgent maybe painting and a lot of them have 
not a lot of them, some of them like this one, I'm thinking about a particular thing and I'm actually thinking about a particular circumstance and person. And um, I'm thinking about how, you know, I think all paintings can be like um, markers of a, of a time and they can be stand-ins for these larger ideas. So I think, I, so like this is fabric that I got from a thrift store and it's like a big, I don't know, like a big, bed sheet or something and it's got all of these ruffles and it's like very over the top and it's got this big bow on it and they're also fake flowers so I wanted flowers that were kind of a little bit uh beautiful but also a little bit gross like to me the 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 color is a little bit garish and they don't quite work together and I was also looking at Dutch still life painting for some cues but like you know that blue color I, I feel is very artificial as a color and so I was, I was thinking about all that and so, so I think like I hope that at first glance it's kind of like over the top and beautiful and but a little bit a little bit off-putting at the same time and that's how I was thinking about it um and then some of these, again, like this painting, maybe I made in a, in a burst in 30 minutes or something. Oh, taking a second. Okay. And then this is the last one. Um, and again, I'm like with all the work I don't have, some painters have set scales that they return to a lot. I'm jumping around all over the place. And this one is like, almost life size so it's it's about 58 inches tall so it's a little bit more imposing and then others are are quite small or kind of handheld and then others are easel sized where they're sort of in between um so that's the most recent that i have on the site i've done some painting of course since then but i haven't i'm still thinking about like how to move forward and um i have had a period of time too where i haven't been painting as much because of some um, professional things going on and so this while this is work that i've been making over the past couple of years it still feels very um applicable to things that i'm thinking about currently and that's my spiel i think i'm really glad that you brought up the fabric because that was one of my questions for you you know i was wondering um how you arrived at that as your subject matter. Cause I saw that as like a binary subject, the object and the environment that it was in. And they were not, the environment was not devoid of being your portrait as well. And so mm -hmm. I, but it's like, they're, they're so abstracted and they're dealing with painting and the, the um, materiality of painting and the texture. And so I felt like it was like, you were doing two things at once, like with the still life and the plant and then the fabric in the background. So I wanted to hear you talk about that specifically and like what you're interested in the fabric. Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, I think this idea of it being two things at once is something I've tried to think about is like I, I'm, I am interested in, I'm like kind of just cycling through these traditional genres of portraiture and still life and landscape. Um, and I'm painting representationally. So I'm painting things that can be recognized, I think, as at least as, a, as, oh, that's a landscape, that's a person. But I hope that there is, I'm always thinking about how they can be pointing to other things or how for me they might be representing other things um, beyond the subject itself. So I, I appreciate you talking about um, the, it being more than one thing, anyway. In terms of the, the fabric, like, so I think this is the first painting I made when I was in Georgia and it, I didn't really know how to make it and it's a tiny little painting, but I was just like looking at the landscape and all of the leaves and all of the trees and thinking about, again, I think I said this, I'm, while I'm attracted to simplicity often, I'm also attracted to visual complexity. So it was kind of a, um, a formal challenge for sure. But I was also thinking about it being really a kind of abstract painting also and nature itself just being very abstract and so that was sort of like my way into thinking about pattern um and it's something that i've always sort of flirted with and played around with but this was really me thinking about landscape as a kind of patterning and you know i had to think about i wasn't interested in painting every individual leaf like it wouldn't be possible and that just doesn't that doesn't interest me 
So thinking about how to, again, just like boil down all of that complexity into something a little more simple um, was something that I was thinking about. But then, so beyond the, the formal interest, I'm, I also do think about what the fabric can suggest. And I think for me, like this to me, this, this particular, like this is a sheet that I um, grabbed out of my grandmother's house after she died. And I was, going, I was able to like go through some of her things. And it was just something that I didn't know what I was going to do with, but I grabbed it and I have this thing. Um, and I don't remember it or anything like that from my childhood, but it's this, it's this thing that is from this, this place that has significance to me. And I don't think like you as a viewer needs to know that to, for this painting. Um, some, you know, but I, I do think that like the, the pattern can lend a kind of attitude and it can be like a way for me to, it's not a narrative exactly, but to create a, a particular um, atmosphere or presence or an idea in a painting. And I think too, they just speak to like um, things from, from home, things from your life. So things from an intimate space, so like a bed sheet or a couch cushion or a, a garment, something that you might wear. So there is this like, I think potential for all of these patterns to not only be visually engaging, hopefully they're engaging to me, but also, um, you know, point to these other other things too, like domestic spaces, for example, or home. And at the same time, I'm also thinking about um, historical painting and uh, like some pretty fundamental um, ideas in painting like figure ground relationships. And so you might, you might know this vocabulary if you're watching or you might not, but the figure ground relationship is just this idea of like, to boil it down into the most simple terms, like what's coming forward and what's going back in space. And it's talking about like the space within a painting. And so a painting like this, I'm thinking about how, to me, it's like, it's really, <laughs> I, like I almost can't believe I made a painting like this because I feel like it's like so insane, um, but also very conservative at the same time. Like it's just a painting of plants, you know, but it's, um, just like so much and the fabric is everywhere and it's like the colors are really um, intense and the way for me it's like the fabric is kind of swirling off of and extending from the plant and so there's this like play between what's going forward and what's going back into space and that all of the pattern behind the plant is louder I think than the plant itself um I don't know there's probably something more psychological in there but those are some of the things that I, I think about with the, with the pattern. Um, what do you, I'm interested in the act or process of recording one's own space as a statement of minimal ex existence as an artist. Mm -hmm. um, as artists, we select our subject matter, we choose what our external productions will be, and you touch on this slightly in your statement. So why are you often drawn to the process of painting that is a quiet reflection of your own environment rather than um, grandiose visual fabrications? I think it's, it's just an extension of kind of, of myself and my kind of my nature as a person, not only as, as a, an artist, but just as a person in the world and how I kind of have carved out the experience of my life. I think that, um, you know, minimalism, I was just reading a beautiful essay about Agnes Martin and, you know, the artist Agnes Martin went out into New Mexico and her, her life was all about kind of solitude and pure experience and really living with minimal means and, I certainly don't go that far in my work or in my thinking, but um, I think I'm I am I'm quiet and, and, and private as a person, and um, I think that that is related to what I'm drawn to and the interests I have and what I pursue in my work. And so I think there is a reserve and a sort of quietude um, 
maybe stillness in the work often that is, I think, an extension of just my experience in the world, my lived experience. And I think I'm, I'm very comfortable. I said before, like, I, I really value solitude and I recognize it as being an incredible privilege to have those opportunities to go and work and think alone. And I'm very comfortable with quiet. Um, my husband is a writer and he's very quiet and we, we spend a lot of time not speaking and just doing like working by ourselves. Um, and we're really comfortable with that. And, um, yeah, I think that's, it's all wrapped up in that. And, um, yeah, I appreciate the question. I think your, um, insight into your, um, thinking about how you visualize the, the plant paintings, um, was interesting for me. And, but thinking about them as, you know, these portraits that, exist only momentarily because they are growing and developing and changing with us and they're also witnesses in our space and we they're constant companions and so you know i see them as portraits as well too you know and of you too yeah um, i mean they're, they're very much like you know i'm working from things that are in my life and i'm taking bringing all of these things into my studio space, you know, and um, so they very much are a reflection of just hours of time spent, like with these objects, like just looking really deeply and painting, hopefully thoughtfully and yeah. Well, and they're also not immune to like death too, mm -hmm. you know, like they don't last forever and you have plants that are with you for a little while and mm -hmm for a very long time, you know? So there's this like trajectory that I think that um, is coming out in these, these pieces too. Thank um, you. Um, just one more question and then we'll wrap it up. I think our times, let's see, let me check on it. We've got about seven more minutes. So um, I recently read an article um, that referenced how painting is an archive or a mnemonic device, because the history of painting is held within individual works. Um, and that memory is the medium of painting. Um, in preparing for this talk and, and thinking about your work, I thought about this and how your work is a dialogue with the history of painting. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that rings true to me. Um, that resonates so much. I think that no, if you're engaging in painting in any way, whether it's, um, we talk about painting now today, sometimes as painting in the expanded field. And a lot of that has to do with thinking about, um, I guess advances or directions in painting that challenge convention and challenge traditional ways of working. So even with artists who are thinking about that, working within this expanded fields or with the expanded fields, um, that's still in dialogue with historical painting because it might be working away from more traditional ways of working and painting has such a rich and deep history and so anyone who's making a painting whether they mean for it to be or not is in conversation with the history of painting i mean i'm working um with traditional subject matter and i'm working in my studio and i'm working with representation so i'm painting um people and places and things and that in itself is very steeped in history. So it's more overtly maybe in dialogue with historical painting. Um, I'm also still working with oil paint and oil paint as a material is inherently tied to historical way of working. Like oil paint has a rich history too. And so, you know, acrylic paint is much more contemporary. It's, 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 it hasn't been around as long. So some artists have chosen to work with acrylic, and not that it has to be either or for sure, but to work with acrylic because they don't want to be associated with the history. Um, I feel like as, a, as an artist, it's really your responsibility to be aware of um, not only what's happening in, co in contemporary practice, like that's very important, but also to have an understanding of the history of painting or the history of just art in general. Um, you know, history is always important, not only in art, so that you can think about how to position your work um, and to think about who you're in dialogue with and, and what has come before. Um, I find that to be really exhilarating and I, I see history 
as being full of possibilities. And um, I have never been, um, I guess, driven to, to do something that's never been done before. I don't find that to be as an idea in itself all that interesting. Um, but I, this idea of memory as being, you know, tied to painting, I think it, it's true. The history of painting is, is part of every painting. Um, and also the history of just like, I, I think about painting, I think I may have said this as being a kind of marking of time. And so it's like each painting holds like my experience of, of making the work and touching the work over, over a sustained period of time at a particular time and place. Um, and that's never gonna happen again. And you know, that's, that's distinct from, um, so like a portrait that's made today is, is going to be imbued with like, our time and place and, and the person. Um, and that's going to be in relationship to, but distinct from a painting that was made in the 16th century. And I, I find that so exciting. Um, so those are some things that I'm, I'm thinking about, I think in relationship to your question. Well, I'm going to wrap us up because I think our time limit is approaching. But <laughs> me too. Um, I really enjoyed this talk so much and to um, see all of your work um, and hear you speak about it has been really enjoyable. And um, so again, thank you, Christina. And uh, I hope to see you soon. Thanks. And, uh, you know, take care of yourself and your family. And uh, thanks again. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity.